Bienvenidos al podcast. Súbete al tren digital. Dale, dale, dale. Welcome to the podcast, Subete al Tren Digital, and I'm doing a, a recording, and we're going to be talking about the importance of uh, producing a podcast for cities and counties department. How's that? <laughs> I'm getting ready here because I just saw that the shirt was not that great. How's everybody doing today? We're going to do it in English because we're going to bring... We're going to bring in the special guest, uh, Lily. Okay, stand by because the podcast is about to begin. You know, one of the things that I really like about podcasting, especially uh, behind the scenes in the production environment, is that you get to do really what you want to do and connect with people. Be it real and actually express yourself on, on accordingly to what you want to talk about. So we're going to talk about the importance of uh, producing a podcast for cities and counties, the, the departments, right, to communicate and connect with their communities and in, in a strategic way. So the powerful of that is, is, uh, is, is phenomenal because... The platforms and as, as, as YouTube and Spotify are dominating the, the market. So let's bring in uh, Lily. Give me a second. Hello, Lily. This is Alberto with the podcast Subete al Tren Digital. How are you doing today? Hey, Alberto. I'm excited to start this podcast with you about the importance of creating podcasts for cities and counties. Let's jump right into it. What do you think are some of the main benefits of government entities creating podcasts for their citizens? Well, I think that it gives them an instant uh, connection to the communities and, uh, and then they can listen to it anywhere what they want. Absolutely, Alberto. One of the key benefits of podcasts for government entities is indeed the ability to connect with citizens in a more accessible and convenient way. Unlike traditional town hall meetings or news conferences, podcasts can be listened to anytime, anywhere. This makes it easier for people to stay informed about local issues and updates, even if they can't attend meetings in person or catch the news at a specific time. Additionally, podcasts can also provide a more personal and engaging way for government officials to communicate with their constituents. By using a conversational format, podcasts can help humanize government leaders and make complex issues more relatable and easy to understand. Absolutely. I agree with you. And one of the things that I really captured my attention is the connection to the community directly. Yes, the direct connection to the community is truly powerful. Podcasts allow government entities to reach people on a more personal level, creating a sense of transparency and accountability that might not be as easily achieved through other forms of communication. For example, imagine a city council podcast where citizens can call in or write in with questions or concerns. This kind of interaction allows people to feel heard and involved in the decision-making process, which in turn can help foster trust and engagement between government entities and the communities they serve. You know, one of the observations that I have is actually when people are able to get education from that department. What do you think about that? Education is definitely a crucial aspect of podcasts for government entities. By creating informative and educational content, These podcasts can help citizens better understand the role and function of different departments, as well as the various services and resources available to them. For example, a podcast series from the city's Public Works Department could explain how water treatment plants operate, how roads are maintained, and how recycling programs are managed. 
This not only helps citizens appreciate the work being done behind the scenes, but it also empowers them to be more informed and engaged in local decision-making processes. What do you think it will be an attraction to directors of communications to motivate them to produce podcasts for their departments? One major attraction for directors of communications to produce podcasts for their departments is the ability to reach a wider audience and engage with citizens in a more personalized and effective way. Podcasts offer a unique combination of convenience, accessibility, and personal connection that other forms of communication may not provide. By investing in podcasts, directors of communications can ensure that important information is reaching as many people as possible, regardless of their schedules or preferred media platforms. Furthermore, podcasts can help departments stay ahead of the curve when it comes to communication trends. As more and more people turn to podcasts for information and entertainment, it makes sense for government entities to adapt and embrace this medium to better serve their communities. And one of the things that we're doing here at 30 Seconds is that we are able to produce podcasts virtually anywhere where they're at and uh, edit it here and publish it from here. That's a great service that 30 Seconds is providing. The ability to produce podcasts remotely and handle all the editing and publishing logistics is a game changer for busy government departments. By outsourcing the technical aspects of podcast production, departments can focus on creating engaging and informative content without worrying about the time-consuming process of editing and distributing episodes. This streamlined approach makes it easier for government entities to incorporate podcasts into their communication strategies and reach their audiences more effectively. For example, uh, to a police department, what will be topics of interest to engage with the audience on a podcast? A police department could cover a wide range of topics to engage with their audience on a podcast. Some ideas include uh, community safety tips and crime prevention strategies, profiles of different officers and their roles within the department, explanations of police procedures, such as traffic stops or investigations, information about local events and initiatives, such as neighborhood watch programs or youth outreach activities, interviews with community leaders, crime victims, or criminal justice experts, discussions about hot topics, such as body cameras, de-escalation techniques, or mental health training for officers. By covering a diverse array of topics, a police department podcast can not only keep citizens informed, but also help build trust and foster positive relationships between law enforcement and the community. Something that is educational, but is also entertaining and it has a lot of information. What do you think about that? Striking a balance between education and entertainment is key to creating a successful and engaging podcast. It's important to remember that while people want to learn, they also want to be entertained and enjoy the listening experience. To achieve this balance, government entities can use storytelling techniques, incorporate humor when appropriate, and include interviews or roundtable discussions with interesting guests. By presenting information in a way that is both informative and enjoyable, Listeners are more likely to tune in regularly and feel invested in the content. Additionally, incorporating diverse voices and perspectives can help keep the podcast fresh and appealing to a wider audience. This might include featuring guests from different backgrounds, sharing personal experiences, or even inviting community members to contribute their own stories or questions. I think that podcasting is strategic podcasting for a department of a city of a county. It also gives them to enrich their branding and their mission and vision, right? Absolutely. Strategic podcasting can be a powerful tool for government entities to strengthen their branding and reinforce their mission and vision. By consistently producing quality content that aligns with their values and goals, Departments can build a strong and recognizable brand that resonates with citizens. Podcasts can also help departments showcase their expertise 
demonstrate transparency, and promote citizen engagement, all of which are crucial components of a well-rounded communication strategy. Furthermore, podcasts can serve as an archive of a department's accomplishments and progress over time. As new episodes are released, listeners can track the department's growth, challenges, and successes, providing a sense of continuity and accountability. For sure, for sure. You know, another thing, another topic, it'll be recruitment. When the department is looking for specific individuals to, to join the force. Yes, recruitment is a perfect topic for a police department podcast. By dedicating episodes to recruitment, departments can reach potential candidates in a personal and authentic way. Some ideas for recruitment-focused episodes could include interviews with current officers, sharing their experiences and career paths, explanations of the application process, including requirements and deadlines, spotlight on different positions and specialties within the department, Discussions about the benefits of a career in law enforcement, such as job stability, community impact, and professional development opportunities. Podcasts can also help dispel common misconceptions about law enforcement careers, address concerns about diversity and inclusion, and provide a platform for candidates to ask questions and learn more about the department's culture and values. It is amazing how podcasting is uh, impacting different departments. And another subject is uh, water, water in the world, uh, water departments. What do you think about that? Podcasting can definitely play a vital role in educating citizens about water-related issues and the work of water departments. Given the importance of water in our daily lives and the increasing concerns around water scarcity, pollution, and infrastructure, podcasts can help raise awareness and promote sustainable water practices. Some potential topics for a water department podcast could include the science of water treatment and distribution, water conservation tips and initiatives, updates on water quality and safety, explanations of water rates and billing procedures, the impact of climate change on local water resources, profiles of employees, and the various roles within the department. By using podcasts to share information and engage with citizens, water departments can foster a more water-conscious community and promote responsible stewardship of this precious resource. You know, one of the things uh, it, it is, is how important is water for humans? Water is essential for human life and it's often taken for granted until it's scarce or compromised. Not only do we need clean water to drink and maintain our health, but it's also vital for agriculture, industry, and maintaining our ecosystems. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the human body is approximately 60-70% water, highlighting just how integral water is to our physical well-being. Additionally, access to clean water is recognized as a human right by the United Nations. By dedicating podcast episodes to the importance of water and the work of water departments, listeners can gain a deeper appreciation for this vital resource and understand the complex systems and infrastructure that make it available to us. One of the things that I'm noticing at a global stage is that the combination of different type of waters, rainwater, reclaimed water, or water that is coming from the mountains. What do you know about that? Yes, you're absolutely right. There are various sources of water that contribute to our global water supply. Let's explore some of them. Me, rainwater, also known as precipitation. Rainwater is one of the primary sources of fresh water on Earth. It's the water that falls from clouds as rain, snow, or hail. Many people collect rainwater for irrigation, livestock, or even domestic use in some areas. Reclaimed water. This is wastewater that has been treated and purified, making it safe for non-potable uses such as watering plants, flushing toilets, or industrial cooling. Reclaimed water helps conserve freshwater resources and reduce pressure on water treatment facilities. Mountain water. Water that originates from mountains, also known as snow melt, is a significant source of fresh water for many communities. As snow melts in mountain regions, it sure. flows into rivers and streams, supplying water for irrigation, hydropower, and municipal use. 
For sure. And you know, one of the things that, that the people like to know is the quality of water that they're drinking and getting at home. Water quality is certainly a crucial concern for many people, and drinking water should be safe, clean, and free from harmful contaminants to protect public health. In the United States, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, sets national standards for drinking water quality under the Safe Drinking Water Act. These standards establish limits on various contaminants, such as bacteria, viruses, chemicals, and radionuclides. Water departments play a vital role in ensuring that drinking water meets or exceeds these standards. They regularly test and monitor water quality, treat water to remove contaminants, and distribute it to homes and businesses through a complex system of pipes, pumps, and treatment plants. By educating citizens about water quality standards and the work of water departments through podcasts, people can feel more confident about the safety of their drinking water and better understand the importance of maintaining a robust water infrastructure. You know, the importance of uh, bringing uh, honesty uh, from the water department into the audience, I think is incredible. And it educate the audience on different type of issues in the quality of water they have in their home. Transparency and honesty are crucial when it comes to discussing water quality with the public. By openly sharing information about water testing, treatment processes, and any potential issues or challenges, water departments can build trust and confidence among their citizens. Podcasts provide an excellent platform for water departments to address concerns and answer questions directly from the audience. For example, if there's been a water main break, or a boil water advisory. A podcast can quickly and effectively communicate the situation, explain the necessary steps to ensure safety, and provide updates on the resolution. Furthermore, podcasts can also educate listeners on ways they can contribute to maintaining good water quality, such as properly disposing of household chemicals, conserving water usage, and reporting any water quality concerns to the appropriate authorities. You know, what, what do you know about one water movement in the United States? What do you know about that? I'm not familiar with a specific movement called One Water in the United States. However, there are several organizations and initiatives focused on water conservation, water rights, and improving water quality. Some examples include water.org, the Nature Conservancy's water program, and the Waterkeeper Alliance. Are you referring to one of these organizations or a different movement altogether? No, I think that different cities and counties in the in the country are initiating a program that is called One Water. And it's about combining the different resources that every city and county has about the water. Ah, I see. It sounds like one water might be a term used to describe an initiative where cities and counties work together to pool their water resources and manage them more effectively. This could involve sharing infrastructure, expertise, or best practices to ensure that everyone has access to clean, safe water. This type of collaboration can be particularly important in areas with water scarcity or water quality issues. By working together, cities and counties can leverage their collective resources to address these challenges more efficiently and cost-effectively. Have you seen any specific examples of One Water initiatives in action? I'd love to hear more about them if you have. Well, Lily, let me let me change the subject a little bit. What do you think is the power of like Spotify and YouTube to publish the podcast from these cities and counties? Using platforms like Spotify and YouTube to publish podcasts for cities and counties can be incredibly powerful for several reasons. Wide reach. Both platforms have millions of users worldwide, allowing cities and counties to reach a vast audience with their messages and information. User-friendly. Spotify and YouTube are designed for easy navigation and consumption of audio and video content making it simple for people to find and listen to the podcasts. Multi-platform support. 
Podcasts published on Spotify and YouTube can be accessed on a variety of devices, including smartphones, tablets, smart speakers, and computers, ensuring that listeners can tune in wherever and whenever is most convenient for them. Shareability. Both platforms enable users to easily share content with their networks, which can help cities and counties amplify their messages and encourage more people to engage with their podcasts. Overall, leveraging Spotify and YouTube can significantly enhance the reach, accessibility, and impact of podcasts for cities and counties. This is excellent information. Lily, what do you know about how many Americans in the United States listen to podcasts? What is the percentage? According to recent studies, approximately 78% of Americans are familiar with the term podcasting, and around 55% of the population has listened to at least one podcast. While the percentage of regular podcast listeners is smaller, it's still a substantial portion of the population. Approximately 37% of Americans listen to podcasts on a monthly basis, and 24% listen weekly. Interestingly, the popularity of podcasts has been steadily increasing in the United States over the past few years, particularly among younger demographics. This trend suggests that podcasts will continue to be a relevant and effective communication tool for cities and counties in the future. You know, one observation that I have is that how's podcasting changing the way uh, we produce radio, perhaps radio versus podcasting? You're absolutely right, Alberto. Podcasting has indeed revolutionized the way we produce and consume audio content, including radio. Traditional radio has long been a one-way broadcast medium where the audience has limited control over what they listen to and when. In contrast, podcasting offers a more on-demand, personalized experience, allowing listeners to choose when, where, and what they listen to. As a result, many radio stations and producers have started creating podcasts to complement their traditional broadcasts, recognizing the growing demand for more flexible, user-centered audio content. Additionally, podcasting has democratized the audio landscape by lowering the barriers to entry. Anyone with a microphone and internet access can start their own podcast, leading to a diverse range of voices and topics that might not have been represented in traditional radio. And you know, one, uh, one of the observations that I have is that it's also a two-way communication. People can make comments, people could talk about what they're talking about in the podcast and make a change in the direction of the podcast. That's an excellent observation, Alberto. One of the most significant advantages of podcasting is its ability to foster two-way communication and engagement between creators and listeners. Unlike traditional radio, which typically relies on call-in segments or text messages for audience participation, podcasts often encourage listeners to leave comments, send emails, or even call in with their thoughts and questions. This level of interaction not only makes podcasts more engaging for the audience, but also allows creators to gather valuable feedback and tailor their content to better serve their listeners' interests and needs. In the context of city and county podcasts, this two-way communication can be especially beneficial as it enables residents to voice their opinions and concerns, ultimately leading to more informed decision-making and stronger community connections. You know, another thing about podcasting for the cities, departments, and, and counties is also diversifying the content for different platforms and different lengths. So what do you think about that? Diversifying content across different platforms and lengths is a smart strategy for cities and counties to maximize their reach and cater to various audience preferences. By repurposing podcast content into shorter snippets for social media, creating video highlights for platforms like YouTube or Instagram, or even transcribing episodes into blog posts, government entities can ensure that their messages are accessible and engaging for as many people as possible. Additionally, offering content in different lengths allows listeners to choose 
the format that best suits their needs and attention spans. For example, some people might prefer to listen to a 30-minute deep dive into a complex topic, while others might prefer a quick five-minute update on local news and events. By diversifying their content, cities and counties can make their podcasts more flexible, user-friendly, and appealing to a wider range of audiences. Definitely. I think that uh, podcasting, uh, the cities and counties uh, need to take in consideration and take uh, advantage of this power, available power to everyone. Absolutely, Alberto. Podcasting is a powerful tool that cities and counties should not overlook. By embracing this medium, government entities can increase transparency and accountability foster stronger community engagement, educate citizens about important issues and initiatives, enhance their branding and public image, adapt to changing communication trends. Ultimately, podcasting has the potential to transform the way government entities connect with their constituents, leading to more informed and involved communities. Well, you guys listen to it. Lily, thank you so much for being with us in this podcast about cities and counties coming in into the podcast world. You're very welcome, Alberto. It's been a pleasure discussing the potential of podcasting for cities and counties. I'm confident that government entities that embrace this technology will see significant benefits in terms of communication, engagement, and overall community satisfaction. Remember, listeners, if your city or county doesn't have a podcast yet, consider reaching out to your local officials to express your interest and support for this innovative communication tool. Together, we can help shape a more connected and informed future. Together, we can help shape a more education and informative uh, future for counties, cities, and communities. And that's the goal here at 30 Seconds. So you guys listen to a very intelligent conversation with my friend Lily. And I hope you guys uh, got a little bit about this uh, podcast. Very educational and very motivational about podcasting for our branding, for our businesses, for our corporations, for our cities and our counties. And uh, at the, the end goal is to communicate that message and connect with that community and uh, be talking about uh, different subjects and get educated and get information. Thank you for watching. This is Alberto Araujo on Subete al Tren Digital, a company by 30 Seconds LLC. Thank you. <laughs>